And if you are, obviously, you're watching online, um, I wanna tell you about our home guide that we created a couple of weeks ago. And it's specifically for, for you, um, for your friends, for your family, uh, for your roommates. And it, it gives a lot of like tips and suggestions on different ways to help you prepare to do church at home. Um, it's really cool, we've got the message notes in there, as well as some like reflection and discussion questions pertaining to each message. And we're pretty excited about this weekend's message, but make sure you check that out, the home guide. You can find it on the chat platform, you can find it on the app, and you can also find it at the nas.church slash home guide. nas.church slash home guide. So make sure you check that out. Josh, can you tell our friends how else they can stay connected with us throughout the week? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we have a lot of different ways that you can connect uh, with the church. Um, just because there's a quarantine going on doesn't mean that you should not uh, not be connected. You should always stay connected, and we love being connected with you. Uh, the first way to stay connected is obviously the church is open. You can come, and that's our favorite way because that means we get to see you, you get to see us, and we get to uh, worship together and fellowship together. Even if we don't get to hug, we still get to see you. Um, and it's just nice being in each other's presence. Absolutely. Uh, second way is, um, yes, yes, the drive-in. <laughs> um, we are still doing the drive-in services behind the church. Um, if you want to get out of the house, if you still want to be involved and come onto the campus, we are still doing the drive-in services. You can come in and park behind the church and watch on the screen. Uh, and, and you're still here, just not inside the sanctuary. Um, obviously, you can still join us online um, and... Uh, you can watch this service and past services on our YouTube. Uh, we record all of them and put them on there. And you can access all of those by going to the nas.church slash connect. Awesome stuff. So, yeah, like Josh said, we are here. You know, we've got like our awesome masks on, as you can see. And we have required all of our staff and all of our volunteers to wear masks to help keep everyone safe, you know, because as much as we do want to see you, your safety and your health um, comes first. So number one priority. Yeah. So know that like we are taking proper precautions and protocols here. If you do join us, um, we sanitize and disinfect and clean before and after service. And all of the seats are spaced out socially distant. So, you know, consider joining us maybe next weekend. So um, some other really awesome ways that you can connect with us is sports. Josh, do you like sports? I love sports. I love sports. I like sports, too. What's your favorite? Football. What? Whoa. <laughs> football. I love football, too. But I am glad that MLB is coming back. Yeah. They are letting the season go on this year. And yeah. I'm super excited. So uh, sports is coming back to the NAS. So we've got um, a couple of different options. We're doing line dancing online. It's being streamed. Um, we've got co-ed sand volleyball, and there's another. I can't think of it off the top of my head, sorry. But you can find out more and register if you're ready to, like, you know, get back to, like, relationship and teams and, and just, like, having fun through sports. Go to the nas.church slash sports um, where you can learn more and register. The deadline um, to sign up for the sports is not until July 15th, so you've got plenty of time. So, yeah, um, check out sports. And then one other thing we're really excited about is we're bringing groups back, guys. Um, you, you'll probably get some information in an email over the next couple of weeks on kind of like the process that we're gonna take to bring groups back into the building. We're gonna start small, and obviously there's gonna be um, some protocol. So yeah, we're excited. We're, we're kind of, you know, just moving forward, continuing to move forward to gathering again. So, all right, I think it's almost time. Yep, almost time. Uh, who's, do you know who's bringing the message this morning? Uh, Pastor Mark is bringing the message. Pastor I'm Mark. super excited. Pastor Mark's bringing the word. All right, guys. Um, we're pretty excited. He's going to talk to us about sharing our story. So let's get ready and get ready to worship.
everybody. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. Are you guys ready to worship today? All right. We're just here to lift him up. Come on, join with me as we sing together. And I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. In man's empty praise and treasures of fame are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Come on, let's lift our voices. Oh, there's nothing. Show you my weakness. 
celebrate. We serve a God. He can do all those things. We serve a mighty God. And we just want to lift him up in this place. God, right now, we thank you that you're here with us. God, we thank you that you aren't a God that just stands idly by, but you walk with us each and every step of the way. You go before us, you beside us, you're behind us. You surround us with your love and with your purpose and your plan. And God, we thank you for that. We want to walk in it today. Come on, let's join in singing a testimony of praise. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Lift our voices together again. Perfect submission. our voices in our hands as we sing our testimony of what God's doing. This is my story. This is my song. Praise you, my Savior. All the day long. This is my This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. We serve a mighty God. Come on, just begin thanking him for the things that he's doing in your life, even right now in this moment.
He's here in this place right now. As we lift him up, as we thank him for what he's doing right now in this moment, just present what you need from him. He's here to make a way where there is no other way. Thank you. 
voices and sing that one more time. That's who he is today. That's who he's been in the past, and that's who he promises to be in the future. Give the Lord some praise this morning. I want to invite you, if you're watching it online, watching in the drive-in this morning, bow your heads and pray with me. If you're here in person, you may be seated. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for making a way. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your consistency to be present in our lives when we need you most. And God, as we sang those words this morning, we're asking you to do it again, to make a way again, to be present in our lives again, to speak truth into our lives of who we are and what our place is for eternity with you. For that's where our hope is found. Father, I pray as we prepare to continue in worship this morning and give of our tithes and offerings out of the abundance you've provided to us, the way that you've met our needs when we didn't even know how we were going to connect the dots you made a way for us as well bless each gift that is given out of faith and trust that you will continue to provide in our lives in Jesus name we pray and everybody said amen amen we want to remind you as we move into our time of offering there's some new ways that we are giving here if you're in person on the way out there will be boxes marked that you can give uh, and just drop that off on your way. And then if you're watching online and you're watching uh, through our live stream service, we're so thrilled that you're tuning in. There will be a little give button there that you can connect and give. And everyone is invited uh, to use the app. And giving through the app is pretty simple, easy to set up. You can mark the amounts on there. And uh, it even offers a reoccurring button for you uh, if you are looking for that. There are a lot of ways to experience the NAS in person. We've got a great group here this morning. Had a great group as well at our 9 a.m. service. We still have the drive-in option. And you can also find us online or on demand if you're looking for ways. And we want to encourage you to continue to stay connected. We've got a brand new website that we've launched, the NAS.church. Find different areas and ministries and places you can get plugged in as well. Classes and groups that are offered, and you can find that information there. And then the NAS Sports is launching and back up. We are having our league started up here as well. Registration is open for uh, some recreational co-ed sand volleyball that we're hosting here on campus, as well as our softball teams. Our leagues are starting, and so registration is open for that and a couple of our tournaments if you'd like to get involved with that. We'd love to get you connected and meet some people and have some fun together. Well, thank you so much for being here and tuning in. I'm going to turn your attention to the screen as we prepare to hear our message today from Pastor Fuller. So the airline lost my bag temporarily. I had to go into that baggage claim office. Boy, that must be a wonderful place to work. <laughs> Every single person that comes in, you have to go, uh, let me guess, you're angry? <laughs> angry people here, livid people here. Stay organized, angry, livid, those who want to wring my neck. Let's stay organized. So I know it's got to be hard for them, you know. So it, it, I'm trying not to be too upset, but it's hard not to be, they lost your bag. But you got to squelch it or else they won't do anything for you. You got to go in, hey, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, my bag? <laughs> Yeah, I gave it to you guys a few hours ago. And, and it ain't spinning around on that thing. Well, 
Hopefully it'll be on the next flight. If not, it'll come in on tomorrow morning's flight. We'll deliver it to your hotel. In the meantime, you don't need to worry. I have this for you. He reaches under the counter. He hands me a little bag this big with a zipper on the top, and it says, Essentials Kit. <laughs> oh, these are the essentials. <laughs> then I overpack. I thought I needed all that stuff I meticulously put in my suitcase. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> they have the gall. If that was really an essentials kit, if you had one, you'd never need to go to work again. Whatever happened to Harry? Oh, he don't need us. He happened upon an essentials kit. <laughs> he opened it up, it was filled with food, shelter, and love. For reminding us what is essential in life, right? <laughs> well, we're learning about what is essential for us as a church. I'm Mark Fuller. Some of you newbies don't know who this guy is, the old dude here, but it was my privilege to pastor this church for several years, and uh, it's good. To, well, hey, well, you're clapping for Sue, my wife, I'm sure. She's not able to be in this service, but. Uh, yeah, by the way, you know what? We just celebrated 44 years together. Hey, give it up for Sue. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm, I want to thank, a shout out to Pastor Dale for letting uh, me have the privilege to, to preach here today, to stand in him. You know, I, I told him, I said, Pastor Dale, it's really good that I stepped out when I did because God sent a tornado and a pandemic, and he knew I could not have led the church through this. So you're the man. And the church is great. And by the way, I'm going to tell you guys something. Those of you here in the room, you're watching online. If there's any way you can get here physically next week for worship, it is worth it. I'll tell you. I love worshiping online. It's, it's great. But there's nothing like being with God's people and he's moving and great things are happening. So, you know, we've got plenty of room. We've got a 3,000-seat auditorium. So we can social distance uh, every per turn. But... But it's great to be back, and I love worshiping with you, my Grove City Naz family. And uh, we're learning about essentials. So I, I, want us to, I want us to remind ourselves of the, the mission of why this church is here. Some of you know this. You, you saw it when you came in, if you're in the room. It's up above in the lobby. If you don't know it, it's up on the screen right now, and we're going to say it out loud together. Say it with me. Helping people take their next steps toward Jesus Christ together. Now, let me remind you what it doesn't say. It doesn't say we're here to help people find happiness. We're not here to help people find fulfillment. We're not here to just help people become better parents or have a better marriage or, or find joy. We do all those things. We try to help people do that. But it's all essentially for the purpose of helping them to know and follow and fall in love with Jesus, right? If we don't do that, nobody else is going to do that. So, today we're going to talk about and look at what it means to share our faith in Jesus. You say, if you're watching online or maybe you're here today, say, you know, I've been through this, I've been kind of realizing I need to get kind of focused in on God, so I just showed up. I, I don't even know what it means to have a personal relationship with Jesus. I'm interested, but maybe this message isn't for me. Oh, no, please stay tuned. <laughs> don't check me out. Because you're going to have an opportunity to meet the most amazing person in the universe. And it could happen today, and I pray that it will. You're going to learn a lot about him. So stay tuned. And, and some of you others are saying, well, if you're talking about witnessing and sharing my faith, you know, that's really not for me because uh, I'm just not an outgoing person. You know, I don't, I'm not good with words, I'm kind of quiet, a recluse. Uh, I really don't know the Bible that well, haven't been a Christian that long, so I'm probably not qualified. Hey, no, just the opposite. In fact, you know, my 40 years of doing this, my experience has been most of the time the people that don't feel like they're very good at that, they're the best because they realize they need God and they're open to his help and they're very effective. So we're going to do that today. And before we get into what uh, the Bible says about this and give you some practical handles, we've got one of our staff members here uh, who is just like that. He, he's not a professional pastor. 
You know, some people think, well, only the pastors can, can really share their faith. Uh, no, that's for everybody. So he's not a pastor. Uh, by his own admission, he said, I don't have an outgoing personality. And he, he kind of hides behind the drums uh, most every week. Uh, and uh, he would say, you know, he doesn't have the gift of gab, but he's a much better communicator than he thinks he is. So I want you to hear Zach O'Day's story of how he has learned to share Jesus with those in his sphere of influence. What's up, guys? Uh, my name is Zach O'Day. I'm the Worship and Creative Arts Director at the NAS. I'm blessed to have that position. And I know that some of you guys have some anxiety about what it's like to share your story and talking to Pastor Fuller. Um, I thought that it would be helpful for me to kind of describe what it's like for me. I'm by no means an outgoing, sanguine type person. On the Ninja Turtle scale, I'm like a Donatello, right? So I like to keep to myself a little bit. Um, I'm more of a logician kind of guy. Um, my wife would be on the Michelangelo side of that scale. But if, I, if I'm able to share my story, I think the majority of you guys could probably do it as well. And the reality is, when I started to think about what it's like for me to share my story to someone, um, is number one, I just do it the way Jesus did it. As I read scripture, some of my favorite stories of life change come out of conversations Jesus had um, visiting someone in their house or over a dinner table, kind of like we are now in, in just conversational settings. And the reality is that's how I came to know the Lord, um, through multiple conversations with influential people in my life. Often, as I've had conversations with people, um, I've, I've had some lasting friendships kind of grow out of these conversations. It's not like I go into these conversations thinking that people are projects, right? Like, these are people that I'm genuinely interested in. What I've found is uh, kind, of, kind of crazy is that some of these people that I've met and talked with, pre-believers, um, are more Christ-like than some of the Christians I know, and maybe even more Christ-like than I am sometimes. Um, these are generous and awesome, amazing people, and they just don't know about Jesus yet. So I would just encourage you guys, um, you can't do a whole lot of this sitting in church. That, that was something that I realized. Um, I love coming to church on Sundays, and I love worshiping. Um, I love the vibe that happens when believers get together and celebrate um, and worship together. Um, but what you can't do is get comfortable, right? It's easy for us now to get comfortable. I sometimes wish that those of us that are seasoned believers um, would be given cold coffee and like lawn chairs when we come to church. So after about an hour and a half, we're uncomfortable. We want to get out of there and start doing some ministry um, on the streets and get out here where you can converse with people, right? Um, I think that that's where some of the most impactful life change moments have happened. I think one of the key components of being able to share your story is learning to be entirely reliant on the Holy Spirit, right? So you guys know, you know, Acts Church, Jesus said he commissioned us, commissioned by Jesus to go and make disciples as we are filled with the Holy Spirit. And we have that power in us, right? So being able to be entirely reliant on the Holy Spirit takes some practice because you are entirely out of control. Um, and I learned this kind of the hard way um, after we got back from London uh, and we started instituting this, uh, this thing called Alpha at our church. I was creating this situation where I brought a bunch of my buddies into a restaurant downtown, and I was gonna show them this Alpha video, and the day of, um, I started hearing from a bunch of my buddies, and the majority of them were like, listen man, we're not, I'm not gonna be able to make it. And I had probably like close to 10 people coming, and all but one of them bailed. So. I was super dejected, and I'm like, uh, you know, I was making it all about me, feeling sorry for myself, so whatever. I, I went to the restaurant, because my one buddy was gonna be there. And I got there, and I said, hey man, I'll be right, I'll be right there. And I went into the bathroom of the restaurant, and I called my wife, or texted my wife. And I essentially was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Nobody's here, I'm feeling sorry for myself. And um, I just started praying, right? And I said, you know, Holy Spirit, get me out of here. Um, do what you're gonna do. Went back out and I sat down and I said, hey man, I'm just gonna show you this video. So wouldn't you know it, as soon as I started showing this video, um, one of the servers came over and he said, hey, is that Alpha? And he immediately recognized what I was showing on my phone. I said, yeah, man, it's a, uh, you know, this is like a, a thing that's relatively new to me. And he's like, yeah, it's not new to me. We were doing it in my old church um, in Phoenix. He's from Arizona. And he began to just like talk about how he had gotten away from the Lord he and his girlfriend had moved up here because they had been um, kind of 
uh, jaded by religion down there, and it's this whole story. Come to find out, it's a similar story that I've had with a lot of other friends. And that encounter never would have happened had I have not become entirely reliant on the Holy Spirit and just did, did what, he, what the Holy Spirit prompted me to do. So since then, I met with Jason multiple times, and we had these awesome conversations over coffee, and it ended up that he felt convicted to uh, marry his girlfriend, move back down to Phoenix, and they're involved in a local church down there, and they're just living authentically for Jesus right now. And had the Holy Spirit not intervened, that never would have happened, right? So when I, when I uh, diminished myself and allowed the Holy Spirit to take over, that's what happened. So if I can do it, you know, an introvert, a Donatello, if I can do it, then I think you guys can do it too. So I hope that brings you some encouragement, and I hope that that prompts you to be able to uh, go and share your story because it's so important to be able to do that. So uh, be like Jesus, um, you know, meet people where they are, literally and figuratively, and I believe that the Holy Spirit can do a work in you. That's right. Good. Hey, I don't need to preach the message. You just heard it, man. Great job, Zach. God bless you, man. Let, let's pray. Let's pray. Just say with me, come Holy Spirit. Would you say that? Come, Holy Spirit. We focus on you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. You're the one who can make the Father's love for us real in us. Do it today. You're the one that makes what Jesus did for us empowered in us. Thank you. You're the one who can give us the opportunity to share you with others. And you're the one who's going to help me right now, get me out of the way, speak to everyone here. Where you're seated, where you're watching, just say, speak to me today, Holy Spirit. Apply this to my life. And I'll say yes to you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, We've heard Zach's story, great practical suggestions. And uh, I want this to be really practical, guys. We're going to give you some real practical stuff. Because I, I believe if you know Jesus, I don't need to lay a guilt trip on you to share him. You know the, the most dynamic person in the universe. And he lives it within you. And you have a love for him. You just need some handles on this new and you know, situation we're in with all this pandemic and, no, and now everything's changed. How do, I, how do I connect with people? How do I share him? Well, there's some principles that are very applicable. We're going to look at uh, the New Testament story of this. A man in the New Testament, his name is Philip, and we read about him in Acts chapter 8. So you can take your Bibles or your devices and find Acts chapter 8, starting with verse 26. And as you're finding it, let me kind of tell you about Philip. Because like Zach, he was not a professional pastor. He was not one of the apostles. But he loved Jesus. He had a servant's heart. In fact, he was the one that the church appointed to make sure all the homeless people got food and the poor people were cared for. He facilitated all that. I thought about in our context, in Fred and Donner over here. You know, he's, he was the Fred Reeser of the New Testament church. You know, that's what Fred does through George Crossing. He's just out there. He's got a heart and a passion that people who are lost and homeless need him. And, and so we have a, a beautiful partnership with, with that ministry. And, and so that's Philip. That's what he did. And uh, God was using him in, a, in, a, in an incredible way. And we can learn from his example in, in Acts chapter 8 some practical things. Here, here's the first thing. If you want to share your faith, first of all, you've got to be available. Right? You've got to be available for God to use you. Some other time in my life, I would say, God, I, I, this is what I'm going to do for you. <laughs> and that wasn't at all on God's agenda. And I'm going to say, God, I'm going I'm to be available. You can do whatever you want, wherever you want, however you want with me. That was Philip. So look at verse 26. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out. Now, I want to tell you, this was not on Philip's agenda. At the time the angel spoke to him, he was in Samaria. He was 
preaching the gospel, sharing Jesus with people in Samaria. And the, I mean the people were receiving the message. They were hungry for truth. They were hungry for something real. They were hungry for some hope. And boy, the message of the gospel and Jesus just found fertile soil there. And for Philip, is just having a great time. People are coming to Christ in droves and, and God's doing miracles all around him. God gave him the power to cast out demons and people that were demon possessed. And God used him to heal people who were sick. And it was just amazing. Now, why wouldn't you want to just stay in that environment, right? In the church circles, we call that, that's revival, you know. You want to hang out where God's just really moving. But the angel said to him, Philip, leave here. Now, I got to admit to you, if I'd have been Philip, I'd have said, oh, okay, I'll get around to that. But God, you're working here. Why wouldn't you want me to just stay right here? Well, God wasn't done working in Samaria, but he was finished with Philip in Samaria. Because God had a very special assignment for this man, and we'll find out. He was going to send him on a desolate, away from the crowd, away from the moving of God, on a desolate road to meet a man from a different race, a different nation, a different culture, who would accept Jesus and take this same Jesus to his country and to his people. But to do it, Philip had to give up his agenda, right? That's what we learn here. Surrender. I give up things I love for the people that God loves more. So if you really want to see God work in your life, quit trying to convince him to do your thing and check out his thing and be available. That was Philip. Secondly, develop a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. I don't know whether you listen to, to Zach, but he mentioned it several times. He was, he was so tuned in to the Holy Spirit. Now, this sounds kind of mystical, I know, but it's not. It's not you know, rocket science either. It's just every time we said, we said it earlier, Come Holy Spirit. I love those, those three words. I hear them a lot around here. You see, when you come to know Jesus, here's the neat part about this. The same Jesus that walked this earth thousands of years ago, the same Jesus that rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, he said, unless I leave, the Holy Spirit can't come. And when we accept Jesus by faith and trust in him, that same spirit that lived in Jesus comes to live in you and me. So if you know him, he's there. And when you say, come Holy Spirit, it isn't that he's showing up and he wasn't there. No, he's been there all along. It's just you're focusing in on his frequency and his wavelength. Does this make sense? So this is Philip. He's being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Look at this in verse 27. He started out heading down this desolate road, and he met, of all things, a treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kankade, the queen of Ethiopia. This is a man of great prominence in his country. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship. So he, there's obviously he's seeking God, right? He's going to Jerusalem. He wants to find out about this God, Jehovah. But now he's returning, and he still hasn't met Jesus. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament. Now check this out. The Holy Spirit said to Philip. Now I don't know whether the Holy Spirit spoke audibly, but it doesn't matter. Philip knew the voice of the Holy Spirit. He said, go over and walk alongside that carriage. And Philip ran over, heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Here's the deal. There's only one way I know to develop a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, and that's to spend a lot of time with Him. Right? The people you know, you recognize their voice when they speak. You know what they're saying. You, in fact, uh, you know, I've got twin daughters. It's amazing. They will say this. By the way, Father's Day, they both gave me cards. They gave me the exact same card. And they both wrote in it the same side of the card and almost the same thing. They know each other. They've been together a lot, right? It should be the same way with the Holy Spirit. The more you spend time with him, the more you recognize him when he's speaking. 
and you respond to him. Keep saying yes to him. That's what Philip did. So the Holy Spirit said, walk over. Go over and walk beside him. He didn't say, go and stand in front of him and stop. Stop and repent, you sinner. No. <laughs> okay, I'll walk alongside this chariot. And it wasn't some magical ability. It was a result of hours in prayer, right? Be available. Develop a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. And then look at this. Express genuine interest in them. Look at verse 30. Philip asked, do you understand what you're reading? The man replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip, to come up into the carriage and sit with him. Notice that Philip doesn't start the, you know, he's just asking clarifying questions. The man's inviting him up. He's taking the initiative. Philip is interested in this man. He's not interested in the project of winning him to Christ. I love what Zach said. He says, you know, people can pick up if you're doing your witness thing for Jesus. I'm going to witness now. No, listen, sharing your faith is not something you do. It should flow out of who you are. And people can tell the difference. He showed genuine interest in them. He was motivated by genuine love. And as a result, he was, he was not mean and, and obtrusive and obnoxious. He was just kind and, and filled with love and, and, and peace and confidence. And he was winsome. I use that word a lot, and I used it in the rehearsal of this message, and, and some of the staff go, uh, Pastor, I don't want to be a, a dummy, but what does winsome mean? So I'm going to help define that, because we don't use that word very much. Here's what winsome means. Winsome means attractive or appealing in appearance or character. Now, some of us here, we're never going to get the attractive appearance part down, okay? So we're going to try to be attractive in character, and that's me. I want to be winsome. That's Philip. He wants to be the kind of person that people want to be around. And my goodness, you guys, when there's so much stuff going on and so much anger and, and people shouting at each other and, and rancor and all kinds of divisiveness, all the more reason followers of Jesus need to step in and be winsome and be peacemakers. We can do this. We've got opportunities all around us to share our faith and love for Jesus. And that was Philip. And I think, you know, he responds to the guy's questions. He's answering questions that this guy has. Uh, you know, that's, when you show genuine interest in somebody, you're just looking for ways to build a bridge of friendship, right? You're finding things in common with them. I, I think the reason the, the church has lost its relevance in our culture. And let's admit it, for, for most of the culture today, the church doesn't mean anything. Why is that the case? There are maybe a lot of reasons, but one reason I know for sure is because the church has been answering questions nobody's asking. Okay? Listen, people don't care how much we know or about our theology or about our programs or whatever. They're asking questions that people I talk to say, you know, I, I've, got a, I've got a teenager who's out of control. Help me deal with that. I, I've got a marriage that's on the rocks. Is there any hope for my marriage? Talk to me about that. I, I've, I've lost my job in this pandemic. I don't have a way to pay, pay for my, my bills. Talk to me about that. I have lost hope. I am in despair. I am desperate. Do you have anything to say to me about that? And the good news is, we do, but we've got to, we've got to have a, an, an influence, a relationship to be able to respond to them and show them that we're ready to listen, to have compassion, to respond to them right where they are. Only then can we be intentional, be intentional in my conversation. Uh, I'm all the time looking for ways to, to steer the conversation as I'm learning about somebody to talk to them about Jesus. Or to move things into more of a deeper, deeper way. Look what happened with, with, with Philip. Verse 32. The passage of scripture he had been reading, this man from Ethiopia, was this. Quote, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated. He received no justice. 
Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch stopped right there and he said, Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? There you go, Philip's invitation. So Philip, beginning with the same scripture, told him the good news about Jesus. Hey, he didn't talk to him about religion. Thank God. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus. He didn't talk to him about church. He had just been to to this uh, temple in Jerusalem, right? Could have talked about that. No. There's nothing wrong with talking about church. But you know, in our culture today, religion and church, you're not going to get to first base. But you could talk to him, give him some good news. How many know people need some good news, right? (laughs) Good news about Jesus. You've got their attention. You've got an opportunity to be intentional and lead them to him. So let me give you some practical resources to help you do that. By the way, Zach mentioned that the next time Alpha starts up here, invite your friend who's expressing interest in faith and meaning and, and, and things of this nature about God. Invite them to attend with you. Uh, also, give them a Bible if they don't have one. Offer to, let's read through this together in a, in a translation that's, that's a modern day translation. I often find that the best book is John, the Gospel of John. It's the fourth gospel in the New Testament because it, it's got a lot of wonderful stories that will keep them interested and it has enough truth to keep them on track, okay? But also, I, I found another resource. Maybe some of you might, you, you younger folks wouldn't know about this. It's been out so long, but The Purpose Driven Life. Maybe time to bring this back. Uh, Pastor Rick Warren wrote it several years ago. It is chock full of scripture. And it's written for a way to, to read through this with a friend or a family member or an associate. And uh, it might be a great way to kind of foster that interest that they have and, and bring up some intentional conversations about Jesus. But whatever it is, you know, it, it is just about helping them understand who Jesus is. Notice that Philip didn't talk about any notion of Jesus. He used the scripture to show him who Jesus is. Listen to me. There's a lot of ideas about who Jesus is on the internet out there. But if you know the Jesus of Scripture, you can tell your friend, hey, this Jesus, he was a good man, but he's so much more than that. He was a miracle worker, but he's so much more than that. He was a prophet, but he's so much more than that. Listen, this Jesus that I'm telling you about is God himself who came to earth. He didn't wait for us to get up to him. He came to our level. He gave his life out of love for you and for me. He died for your sins to take away the guilt, the shame that you have. And if you'll place your trust in him, he will do a miracle in your life and he will stay with you and give you the hope of eternal life and the power to live this life right now. The Jesus that Philip shared is the Jesus that we can share with our friends. Be available. Stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Express interest in them. Build a bridge of friendship with them. It may take a long time to do that, but stay with it. And be intentional in your conversation. And finally, you can invite them to meet Jesus. Look at verse 36. As they rode along, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? Well, he ordered the carriage to stop. They went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Now, I wish Luke had told us more details about Philip's conversation with this man. Wouldn't you like to have known that? But I, I kind of have a feeling that somewhere along the way, Philip said, hey, uh, you know, I've taught you about Jesus, but let me share with you what he has done in my life. Listen to me, y'all. If you're watching online or in the drive-in, your most effective way to share Jesus is sharing your story, what Jesus has done in you, because through your story, you're sharing his story, Right? And I want to encourage you to do something very practical this afternoon. I want you to get a a, a legal pad out, a piece of paper, and write out your story. Doesn't have to be long, just three paragraphs. And organize it this way. B.C. is before I met Jesus. And just summarize what your life was like. And then how you came to Christ. That's the cross part. 
share some of the details of how somebody brought you to Christ or how God led you to faith in Him. And then A.D. is since you've come to Christ. This is the change. This is the difference He's made in my life. Real simple. And I want to encourage you to write that out and practice it. Become familiar with it. I know it's your stories, but you, you, you share that with a loved one. Share that with a friend because you never know when you might have the opportunity to share your story at a store or in the neighborhood or in a conversation. And you can connect a part of your story with their story and help build a bridge to Jesus, okay? Very practical here, but it's so important that we do this. So important that we do this. And, and obviously, Philip talked to him about baptism. He said, you know, if you want to meet Jesus, this is not some private thing. You've got to go public with it. We do that here at the Thanes, right? And I got one of these shirts. Anybody here have one of these shirts? Raise your hand if you got one of these shirts. A few of you look around. These are people that have been baptized here at the NAS. All right. Good for you guys. And I like this phrase, we're all in, because that's this man from Ethiopia said, whatever it is, I am all in with Jesus. He said, here's some water. Let's take care of it, Philip. You know, I'm going to keep saying yes to him. And whatever he says to do, I'm going to do it. I'm lining up. And I love that because, you see, I've heard people say, well, you know, uh, I, I love Jesus, but it's a very private, he and I have a, this private uh, relationship here. And I, I think with all due respect, uh, it's very personal, and it should be personal, but there's nothing private about Jesus. He wants the, his word out. He wants people to know him. That's why we need to go public, and that's why Philip was used by God to bring this man to faith in him. And I want to say something else, too that I sense, and at my age, I've kind of been around a few years, so I kind of see things shifting back and forth, you know, pendulum back and forth, how we go over here, and then we react and go way over here, and that's what's happening right now as a nation. We, we go over here, and we, we think, oh, that's not good, and then we go way over here, and oh, that's not good, and for about five seconds, we got the balance, you know, <laughs> before we spin to the other side. But when it comes to sharing our faith, when I was growing up, it was like, you know, we had the we had the Roman road to salvation. We had the spiritual laws. We had, we're going to go out. We're going to knock on doors. We're going to win people to Jesus. And, and then if you get them to say this prayer, da, 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 say this prayer with me, da, 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 okay, and you're a believer. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. God bless you, you know. Well, that's, that's kind of way over here. I'm not trying to minimize that. It's an important process, and God used it in many ways. But now I think we've swung all the way the other way, and we think, you know, I'm just going to just kind of, Pray for them, but I'll let them figure it out on their own. The Holy Spirit's working. He doesn't need me. No, you're looking at it wrong. Yes, there's enough truth in that to be dangerous. Yes, he doesn't need you, but he has chosen to use you. He says, I want to win people back to myself. And get this, you get, I did the heavy lifting, you get the good part. You just have to share me and my love with them and live it out in a winsome way. And I'll use you, but be intentional. Look what the Bible says about this. Romans chapter 10. How can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? There's faith. And how can they believe if they've never heard? Well, how can they hear unless someone tells them? And how can anyone go and tell them without being sent? So right now, Pastor Dale's in agreement with me on this. Staff is, I am sending you to share Jesus with those in your sphere of influence. Because look what he says next. How beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Did you know you have beautiful feet? Not only are you winsome and attractive, but you've got beautiful feet too when you share Jesus and go take him everywhere you go. All right? So, go for it. Because here's the deal, watching online, here in this room, look at me, everybody. There are people, children, young people, us older folks, there are people in your sphere of influence that only you can reach for Jesus. I will never know them, but you can be the hands and feet of Jesus. You can be his voice. You can, in a winsome way, not obnoxious way, not weird, just loving them, being available, letting the Holy Spirit use you and lead them to the greatest person the world has ever known. So here's the bottom line. 
And I know this is corny. This is really corny. But you're going to remember it. You know, dad jokes are corny jokes. Well, granddad jokes are doubly corny, okay? (laughs) If we are winsome, we will win some to Jesus. Ta-da! You like it, huh? Ah. Hey, you won't remember anything else I said, but you're going to remember that. So say it with me. Say it with me. Come on. If we are winsome, we will win some to Jesus. Last time I was here, uh, I shared a story about how I was in the gym down in Arizona, and uh, there were two guys that were in the corner uh, just going at it verbally. One was a conservative, one was a liberal, and man, they are just getting louder and louder and louder, and the place is vacating. Maybe you heard me share this story. I want to share you the, 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 the next installment of it. I, I won't go into detail here, but God, the Holy Spirit said, Mark, go over there and stand next to them. Just like he told Philip, go stand next to the chariot. And I thought, really? Are you serious? But I did. I did. And long story short, God used me to dis- not only disarm a very volatile conversation, but in time, these guys became my friends. Bud and Jim. And I began to develop a relationship with them. And every time I go to the gym, we'd connect and we'd kind of small talk, you know, that's okay. But I'd find out more about them, asking questions. What's on your heart, man? What's going on? You know, tell me about your family, you know. What do you do? And uh, we just began to develop a relationship. Well, this last time I was down there, uh, I was on the treadmill one day. and, And here comes Jim. He saddles up next to me on the next treadmill. And we started talking, which wasn't unusual, and there was some small talk. But I'm all the time looking for ways to move a conversation towards more spiritual things, maybe towards Jesus and the hope he can bring and how he can engage with this person. And oftentimes they'll just divert another way, and that's okay. That's okay. Just keep praying for him, keep loving him. But this time he kind of grabbed hold of it, and he started opening up. And he started to share with me. He said, he said, uh, you know, I've, I've been realizing that I have some anger problems. He was the guy, by the way, that was initiating the conversation uh, initially there. And uh, he said, yeah, my wife's been telling me I've got an anger problem. And I said, well, I guess she's right. <laughs> she's always right. Right, guys? No. Uh, but he said this. He said, I, she said, I need to go to a counselor. So I started going to a counselor. And I've realized that a lot of the anger I'm dealing with goes all the way back to my childhood that my dad was abusive and I'd been projecting that anger to him on other people. I didn't realize that. And then my wife said, you need to go to church with me. So I started doing that. And it's helping. It really is helping me. And then he said this. He said, Mark, I I need to ask for your forgiveness of the way I acted that day when we first met each other. I was out of line. And I said, well, Jim, I accept your apology because I know how important it is for you to confess that to me. But I want you to know this. Think of it this way. If that hadn't happened, you and I probably would have never met. We certainly wouldn't be friends and not having this conversation here today. You know, Jim, that's the way God works. He takes our mess-ups. He takes the bad things. And he uses them, and he turns them around, and he uses them for his glory. God loves Jim. I'm so grateful that I could be a part of what God was wanting to do to bring Jim to Jesus. Maybe you're here today in this room. Maybe you're watching online. Maybe you're Jim. You realize that you need some help. That's why you tuned in. That's why you came today. Uh, I want you to know something. I'm your friend. When I say to you, meet Jesus, meet Jesus. He is your only hope. And you can meet him today. You can place your trust in him. He he paints a beautiful picture of himself. He says, I'm standing at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. And if you'll hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in. So I want to give you an opportunity. It's not be all end all, but it's the next step for you. 
So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead us in prayer. But I want us all to close our eyes. And if you join with me, if you know Jesus, pray for those right now that are seeking him. That God will give them the faith to trust in him. Sometimes when we close our eyes, it's easier to focus. So I'm just going to ask you to do that, whether you're watching online or here in this room. Holy Spirit, come. Apply this message to my friend who feels hopeless, who feels desperate, who's asking a lot of questions and not getting many answers. Help them to realize right now that the answer is not a thing or a possession or a human. It's you. You're the answer. May they, may they trust in you. Take you at your word. Right now, if that's you, I just want you to pray this prayer in your heart or say it out loud. Just say, Jesus, I, I realize I'm the problem. It's right in my own heart. I, I've been rebellious. I've been so self-centered. I've been focused on me. And I realize my world is collapsing because it's all about me. I'm looking to you. I'm, I'm going to take you at your word, Jesus. I don't necessarily feel anything. But if you're who you said you are, you're worthy of my, my faith and my trust, and I place my life in your hands. Forgive me. Come into my life. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Maybe you need to say that phrase. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come in, change me, make me new, start that process, and I'll keep saying yes to you. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. And I want to live for you every day for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, you agreed with me, I just want you to know something. You made a critical first step. But there are many other steps. And, uh, you know, normally I would, I would give you a Bible. <laughs> I'd pray with you right here. But we're not able to do that these days. But I do want to get you a Bible. So if you'll go to the app or on the website or call us, there's a place for you to click. Uh, it says, uh, My Next Step. And uh, uh, there's a place for you to say, you know, I, I started today. I said yes. You, know, you click that and then we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch with you. We'll get you a Bible. We'll get you connected here. But I also know that God has a great plan for you. There are people he wants you to reach with this newfound faith, as he does for the rest of us. And I want to pray one more prayer for you guys uh, before we have a song and we're out of here. Because when I was talking, God was bringing somebody to your mind, wasn't he? You know that. As a neighbor, an associate, family member, he wants to use you. Say yes to him. And I want to join with you right now. The Bible says, if two of you agree to anything in my name, I will do it. How many of you know Jesus wants everybody to come to him, right? So I'm going to agree right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I agree with my friend. And right now, on the count of three, I want you to say that person's name out loud. One, two, three. Say their name. Lord, you've heard these names. They all represent eternal people. And Lord, they need to come to you. May we be winsome. May we be obedient to you. May we share with them the love of Jesus and, and help them to see the benefits of doing this eternally and in this life. Lord, I claim every person we pray for the name of Jesus. In his name we pray. And every one of us said, amen, amen, amen. Hey, stand to your feet, guys, because I'm going to leave you one more time. Say the phrase with me. Put it up on the screen, guys. Corny Fuller joke right here. Somebody's going to tweet this before we're out of here. I know this is going to happen. Say it with me. If we are, we will. Amen. God bless you guys.
has given in when I open up my mouth miracles are breaking out I have the authority Jesus has you guys to ask God to renew that name, that person, day in and day out, as we go, that they would be at the forefront of your heart, and that he would work through each and every one of us. God, I ask that you 
would go before us, that you would surround us, and that you would push us along to share your love with the people that you put on our hearts. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. All right, you guys can be seated, and we're going to go ahead and kick it up to you guys to take it online. <laughs> hey, guys. All right, how about just like an awesome way to end service? I mean, that's a new song we just sang, Champion. And um, to hear Pastor Mark just bring the message again, you know, and telling us how important, essential, how essential it is to share our story. In turn, you know, sharing Jesus' story. Um, you know, like how, how are people supposed to know about Jesus if we don't tell them? How are they supposed to believe in him if they've never even heard of him? Um, and Josh and I were talking a little bit ago. You know, I asked him, like, hey, do you know, like, does anybody come to mind where, you know, you've seen life change and people have come to know Jesus? So, Josh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, like we said in the beginning of service, I have the privilege, the privilege of working with our youth. And we run our own alpha program with our youth. And a lot of the youth that have come through there are now student leaders, and the ones that have graduated are now adult leaders. And I can see a few down here that we got about, let's see, one, two, we have about 10 students here that are all student leaders and adult leaders in our youth program. And a lot of them came through alpha. And the cool thing is a lot of them came through, just haven't even heard of Jesus. And now they are leaders in our youth program that lead other students. And it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. So, like, their lives were changed. And it's yeah. exactly what, you know, Pastor Mark was talking about. If we don't tell them, they'll never know. So, like, it's our job to take that good news out. So, good stuff. Good stuff, guys. Um, make sure you, like, tell your family, tell your friends how to stay connected. You know, if you really loved this message, um, you can share it. So, on our YouTube channel, um, youtube.com slash the Naz Church. Um, you can share the videos. So if you want to share today's message, you know, share your story, share Jesus' story, um, do that. And Josh, can you just remind everybody how they can stay connected with us throughout the rest of the week? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, first choice is to be here at the church with us. We love it when you do that because we get to see you and be with you and just be in each other's presence. And it's awesome just to worship and fellowship together. Uh, you can also do the drive-in. You can still drive in behind the church and stream it. Uh, watch the service on the big screen outside. Uh, you can watch online like we are right now. And then on demand, like Roberta was just saying, uh, you can go to YouTube and not just this message, but all of our past messages, and you can share all those. Yeah, good stuff. All right, well, we won't keep you guys. We love you. Um, thanks for hanging out with us this Sunday, and we will see you next weekend. See you next week. <laughs>